Alright guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of The Joe of Painting. I'm Joe Lawson, I am your host and painter today. Uh, and thank you again for joining me on this journey, exploring Bob Ross uh, materials and techniques, um, as well as just, again, putting some oil paint on a dry canvas and seeing what happens. Um, today we'll be painting a very special game in my heart. It is the 10th anniversary of the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Um, and so what we're going to be painting today, since we have this nice black canvas, is an Oblivion Gate. I'm very excited about this. Um, this one should be pretty straightforward, I'm hoping. Um, this one's going to be a quick kind of sketch, but I'm going to spend some time on the details and you'll see what we can get. Uh, we're going to do that nice, really kind of dark, eclectic, lightning bolt, orange kind of sunset sky. Like we're right in front of that gate, so everything's red and orange and fiery. Um, the umber, or the uh, the embers are burning. We're going to be using some umber, by the way. Um, so yeah, it's going to be nice and gritty. We're going to have like that really bright white halo of the Oblivion Gate with that really kind of orange and red and yellow uh, portal zone in the middle, and then we'll have those like yellow lightning bolts shooting out from the side. So um, yeah, we're just going to give this a shot. And if you're painting with me today, awesome. Thank you for joining me in that regard. But um, but yeah, if you're going to be watching this for the next. 20 minutes to an hour, however long this one ends up being. Um, go grab like some pen and paper. It can be lined paper, computer paper, pencil, crayon, whatever. Um, and just spend some time creating anything with me. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, or if you just want to watch, that's cool too. But if you're always looking for some time to draw, now's the time. All right, we're going to get started. So I have my black canvas. This is a pre-treated canvas I got just from Michael's. Uh, it's Artist Loft. That's the brand. Um, sometimes those canvases are a little loose, but you know, again, we're just sketching, we're practicing, um, no big deal there. And then I've, I've painted a similar painting to this once before where I took some liquid white, like I usually do, and I just kind of drained it down or blended it into that canvas all the way down just to where I, I'm going to have most of my sky. And then I'm going to start working in my oranges and yellows and umbers and stuff and getting that real gritty, you know, uh, oblivion sky. Uh, the Oblivion Gate Sky. Um, so let's go through our paints real quick. Over here I have Ivory Black. I'll probably be using quite a bit of that since this is a very dark painting. Uh, we have a lot of dark rock. Um, and followed by that is our Raw Umber, and then our Yellow Ochre, our Burnt Sienna, uh, Crimson Red, Vermilion Red, our Cadmium or Mid Yellow, and then our Titanium White. So we'll be working with these a lot. Um, we'll be building our stone with these sets of colors. Um, we'll be building our sky with these, this set of colors, probably some white. Um, we'll be using this cad yellow and white to do a lot of the highlights, a lot of where um, there's light emitting on this painting. So like the rock, if the rock's all lava-like, you know, there's like the red cracks and, um, you know, that, that's hot, that's thermal, it's active. So there'll be a lot of light shining there. So uh, we'll be using the white to do some highlights and really make this pop, hopefully. All right, so let's get started. I think I want to start with some mid-yellow. I'm just going to load my two inch blender brush, just pull in, pull vertical down in, load up your brush, really drag those bristles. And let's see, so I'm going to start with sort of a yellowy center and work my way out to a more orange and get some of those crimsons in there. And I'm going to work them in too, we don't have like a sunset going on here, it's just a real fiery sky, like hell is breaking loose, literally. So we're just going to get started with our, with our usual X's. Just getting that paint on there. We're just kind of giving the rest of our sky a base. Mix in with the white and the yellow. And the, the other thing I love about this technique of using the, the liquid white on the black canvas is that once you start working with all these colors here and mixing and trying to get your textures in there, um, that black will really start to come through. And that's really what we got. It's like a nighttime sky um, with that, that hellacious glow. A hellacious environment. So just massaging it in there, mixing the yellow and the white a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect yet because we want this to be pretty, like I said, eclectic. A lot's happening right now. Some demons are about to pop out. We're about to whip some ass. And I'm gonna just start pulling in, let's see, some of our vermilion to our yellow. I'm making making some orange pulling it into our brush, and I'm going to start doing that around the edges. Don't be afraid to pull that 
yellow and vermilion together and really just get that sky going. It's fun to paint real quick like these because you can't really dwell on, did I do it right? It's like, no, you just got to go for it. And now I'm going to visit this crimson over here. It's a deeper red than our vermilion. But uh, we can really get a blood red summer going. And maybe towards the horizon, towards the baseline, it gets darker. This Oblivion Gate is taking you hostage. It's like, you got to confront me right now. There is nowhere else but here. I'm kind of giving the... The clouds are kind of holding this area. They're kind of swooping in and creating this little nest. And that's what I'm doing like crimson. I'll bring a little more yellow in here. Ooh, we're getting some pretty rich oranges. And feel free to play like, you know, once we're done up here, like aside from adding like lightning bolts and just sort of highlights and maybe some shadow, um, we're pretty much done around here, so you know you can kind of add textures as you want. Don't, don't try. You know, be mindful of the effects you've already created. I got some nice billowy clouds here that I like. Um, I'm even going to bring in a little, some black in here. Really storm it up. And just gently, kind of. You know, and again, like I always say, and just the rule in general is you can always add more, but you can't take away. So add a little bit of black at a time, or any, any dark color for that matter. Um, and just start simple and, you know, learn, like, you know, pay attention to how much you put on your brush and then see how it hits the canvas. And then you kind of have a meter in your head, a rule of measure for adding more or less. There is some sweeping. Kind of getting some cool like toxic greens in there. Oblivion Gate. Man, I just downloaded this game. I got the Game of the Year Deluxe Edition. So it's like the game plus nine DLC adventures. So that is gonna be so much freaking fun. Just jump back again back in after years of just not even having that game on the brain. I'm gonna just start bringing my ground down. Just sort of giving that some texture that we'll be interacting with other paints with. We'll be bringing other colors in. But this gives us a sense of the space we're gonna be in. And you'll notice I haven't cleaned my brush yet. I'm just going for it. Luckily, this palette is pretty, everybody's kind of on the same page, so you don't have to worry about getting any kind of crazy conflicts. Just they'll keep adding to each other. But, um, but yeah, pay attention to the colors that do start to mix. If there's one more value that's dominant over the others, you might get undesired colors. But luckily, this black canvas allows us to cheat. Not cheat. It allows us to the freedom to play. All right, so and think about, I've noticed the thing I run into, an issue I run in, is I, I get the paint on the wrong side of the knife. So pay attention to, you know, how you're going to be laying this down um, and then get the paint on that side of the knife. If I'm going this way with it, I don't want the paint on this side because it'll be on the wrong side and it'll be hard to drag. You kind of, I've noticed you want to wedge the paint roll that you get on your palette knife um, between your palette knife and the canvas. So you want the paint in between. And so you're just kind of gently dragging. Um, and you don't need a lot because there's you got plenty here. So you just do a nice thin bead down the edge. So what Bob will do is he'll mix the paint like I just did and then he'll spread it out and then he'll just go. He gets that nice little bead. I don't know if you can see it. I'm still figuring out the best way to show this. but. That nice little roll of paint on the edge there. And then he just starts stepping it in. And if you get a little too much, it's fine. You can practice on your palette where your paint is and just kind of drag some of it out. Kind of refine that edge a little more. 
And again, it's just rock. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, based on my image that I'm referencing, I'm going to step out the portal of the gate. So we're going to, maybe the top's right there. Our left side kind of curves over here. And this thing is like a big O. Step it down here. And then our threshold will be right there. Let's see. This comes over. And I'm just drawing now, like, you know, I just, just show myself where I want it. It's okay if you mess up or get paint where you don't need it because you can bring in, you can work that umber in. So this is going to be my gate here. Um, let's see. All right, this is the top of our gate. It kind of has these funky little horn ears. Kind of comes back in. And then this guy kind of comes like this and drops around. Same deal on this side. And this is pretty organic. This isn't, you know, a building you see in Manhattan. This is this is rock that came up out of the ground and formed into this, this portal to a place that nobody wants to go. And when, when Bob uses his pal knife to, to build rock features, the primary thing he's doing is the edge. He's forming the edge. It's not about filling in with your pal knife. So try to be precise and intentional with how you, you lay your line. And, you know, look, again, it's a, this is just raw rock coming out of the ground, so it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but you do want a form. You want something distinct that people, when they see it, they're like, that's some sort of structure. And I'm just kind of pulling. It's forming. They're coming. This edge will be interesting because right where that rock is, we have this really intense, bright white light that emanates from that edge, and then it just kind of melts into this background area. So we'll have to really play nice with our darks. They're going to be right next to each other. This one has like a little hangnail. My palette knife game is getting better. Figuring out those dynamics. Another, another snaggle tooth right there. And these just kind of like organically fall into the ground. And this is cool because this is where you really get to play with creating rocks with that palette knife. Old snag there. And I'm going to go ahead and start getting some of these spires in over here. This is more rock that's just protruding up out of the ground. lucky that this is so organic because we can just make it up as we go. Oblivion. And we'll do a nice little, little fatty over here. That round spire kind of plops in. short round buddy over here. Step this guy out. Alright, let's see what we're working with. 
How is your painting come, coming along, or your drawing, or your Etch-a-Sketch? Maybe you're drawing on a napkin or a post-it note. Maybe you have a Sharpie and you're drawing on your shoes. Whatever it is, make something right now. Work these in. Maybe bring some of that down, create some more, some more depth, some more space. I don't want it too wet over here just because there is a lot, there's a heavy red glow right here. We're going to see if we can drop that in. So what we're going to do, what Bob does is we're going to come in and mine the edges that we created and just I like the texture of that palette knife. But it's okay. We're just creating a base. And we'll come back in with our palette knife. And the changes I wanted to make when I first dropped these in, we'll make sure we get that in there. Oh, and you can't forget the Bolivian Gates. They have those, like, bloody fangs coming up. Uh, I'm going to mix up my my shadows for the our gate, and since we have the, a huge portion of our light source, if not the only light source, um, is this ring of white around here. And so that really, this rock is nice and like dark and marbly. Um, so we don't really have like a white highlight around there. It's like that. It's a like a pale, like a peach color. So this this rock, it's like just it's alive. It's full of like Imagine it has like a, a lava nougat center. Um, and then all around these outer edges where that form of the rock curves around is where we have real dark shadow. Um, and then I'll get those extra little spines slash teeth kind of coming off the structure and around here. Um, and then we'll light whatever we light with our, um, the rim of this rock with, we'll bring out to these rocks as well and just kind of show that that's where that, that light's coming from. And then we have this really kind of like almost like a uh, electric vermilion. I, the vermilion might just do the job on its own, but that light, there's this red light that just spills out right here onto the ground, right past these rocks, and just kind of kind of rings out a little bit. And then you see the spine of, or it kind of spindles out, like almost like when you see like a real dry desert and the, the, the sand contraction, you get all those cracks in it. That's sort of like what we're going to have out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I got this ground where I want it. I don't want to add too much paint there because I don't want it too wet. Um, but I'm going to make sure that you know this is something that that, that glow can lay on. Same thing with here. I want to make sure um, that before I start highlighting things, those base coats and textures are, are what I want. Rebuild some edges that may have been lost. It doesn't have to be perfect edge because it is rock. So I'm noticing as I pull this black in to not get such a hard edge towards the center. I want it to diffuse. You know, I want the, um, the shadow to imply the form of this rock. So if it's, you know, hard edge here to hard edge there, that's how you create like a plane. But since this is round and the light's shifting and, um, it, you know, the light starts to penetrate the darkness, um, you want it to sort of spackle away. Um, if you hold it too tight, you'll get those planes, you know, you'll have more angles. But if you let it diffuse, you have more roundness, it's softer. And so I start hard on the edge, and as I pull towards the center, I just kind of let my, my grip go. So let it float off. Maybe some of these rocks do have more planar faces. Maybe there is a harder edge where they stop. Okay. Spires. So 
Let's see. Clean off that knife a little bit. And it's got these. I'm going to grab from the other side. Got these guys that like jut out. They're spiky. See, this is where it's hard to use just a portion of the pallet knife. Yeah, just do your best. This might be a job for a tiny brush, but it doesn't have the texture I like. So it's kind of like these little hook fangs coming off the side. Let's see, we're going to do two of those. We'll make the next one bigger. Just kind of draw in with the edge of your palette knife. Start walking that paint in. I can dig it. And then we have some like that are kind of, I'm just going to have it coming off this rock. They're huge. Got some big ones. They're more claw-like, a little fatter over here. Oh, this game is so good. Man, this angle, it's so hard. And you don't have to paint on, you don't need this extravagant setup, you know, you can, they have watercolor sketchbooks, you can get tinier canvases, you can get desktop mounts, you can paint digitally, you can do vector artwork. Or just do colored pencils in a sketchbook. They make watercolor colored pencils that you can draw with first and then take water over and kind of spread it out. So if this isn't your medium, don't worry about it. I don't think this is my medium, but I have a lot of fun doing this. So I keep coming back. I'm a digital guy, but it's important, very important to know your roots. And, you know, venture out and practice these new or old. Definitely old. But just expose yourself to as much art stuff as possible. And then you have all these different things floating around in the sky in your head. And you're like, oh, those things relate. Those things are really different, but they relate, kind of. This will most certainly help my thinking when I'm doing digital work. All right, we're going to do one more claw, and then we're going to mix our glow color. We're going to do one more big claw, just kind of coming out of this guy. Going... That's Pirates of the Caribbean, Joe. Damn. He's got that, that barb over here. Kind of sculpting that edge, learning to control this palette knife. Create some interesting edges there. All right, time to mix our our umber. Excuse me, our vermilion. I'm going to clean in my palette knife off. I'm going for volume here. I want, I want a good amount of paint. I don't want to run out of a specific, an important specific color. Lesson learned. Try not to mix right next to the hand hole where you're going to get all over your hand. That's right. This is art. Make a mess. All right. So I think I'm going to use my palette knife, and I'm just going to, same technique as my rocks, just kind of walk this in. Get, some, get the edge going. A 
Careful not to pull the black paint in for your dark colors. Do your best. You can always add more. And I'm gonna try take my one inch brush and just start pulling out and away. Luckily this red is holding its own. I thought it would just drown in the, the umber we put down. Again, just letting this, this light just flood out here. I just mix some white, yellow, and a little bit of vermilion, make like this peach color, and just kind of give it a brighter spot up here. And it kind of fades down into, not as, a, as intense as I want it, but I'm working with a lot of, I'm combating a lot of that dark. All right, I'm happy with that. Um, and so luckily, we still have a lot of that uh, color we mixed, and now I kind of know how to brighten that up a bit um, and give it that glow. Um, and so... I want this right here, this brighter spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off my one inch brush. I think it's okay if it's a little bit marbly too because I mean it's, this is it's just fire everywhere. All right. Take a little bead. Yeah, that'll work. So we're going right to that edge. Pulling it right in. So now I want a little more white in there. Lighten this guy up. And we'll, we'll worry about how it mingles in the that commons area after we get our the bulk of our highlights in there. rock is just on fire. My goal is to 100% it, if possible. I hope I don't give up. I hope I stick with this. But this is one of my favorite, favorite games. Favorite franchises. I loved Morrowind. I was pretty somber when you couldn't, you know, levitate in this game that I know of. But, um, but no, this game, like, the adventure is just unmatched. Man, that looks so cool. All right, I'm just gonna take my one inch brush, dry, clean, a little bit of crimson, and I'm just gonna make this, just dance in little tiny soft X's, just like a core. Imagine it's like Sauron's pupil. Just dance it in there. Just kind of fe feather it through because we're about to bring in our titanium white. We want to make sure this is the portal that we will be stepping through. Give it some swirly action. Just make it look menacing like it's some something's about to come through it. intense. Man, I thought I got paint all over my flannel. I was about to flip. 
this is real tacky white, so this might stick real nice. I don't want too much, but I want enough that I can pull in and like just have that light, that light effect. So, get it right on the edge. Start pulling in. I think the main goal right now is just to step it in there. Get a nice, a decent reservoir of white. That you, again, that you can pull from. Man, this is really nice thick, tacky white. How's that looking? Looking freaking awesome. Of the Caribbean will not leave me alone. It's like, why don't you watch me? It's like, because you don't have downloadable content. Actually, it kind of does. All those other movies, random ass adventures. And if you don't have white, you can just use cream cheese. That's what this feels like. Getting there. Hmm. Can I do that? I'm gonna try that with a brush. So I just wanna see if the fan brush is who we wanna employ. I think it is. Go fan brush, go. And a slight angle, just real gently press and pull. It's okay if the white around your edges isn't perfect, but building a foundation. You can always go back and add more. Build out that rim, that rim light. Yeah, I can see why they call it titanium white. It's got like this silver glow to it. there. All right, um, now from here, I'm going to clean this guy off. And like I said, we'll, we'll revisit these paintings, but I want to go ahead and bring this guy home. Clean, dry fan brush. And I'm going to clean off my palette knife once again. I'm going for some straight yellow. Let's get them out of there. I'm going to come up here. And... Yeah. Let's see how's that working. And then from here, we're just going to do our crazy lightning bolts. 
That's kind of cool. I like that it's pulling the black with it. Just kind of creating this little lightning storm here. I'm kind of like jittering the jittering the knife as I scrape it along. Maybe I can give these a little more, a little more oomph. middle one kind of go almost off the page, if not off the page. See, now what we'll have to do is explore. Like, if I want to do these, how do I do it without picking up all that black? But, an adventure for another time. If you guys have ideas, post your comments. Whoa! And I'll probably come back with the fan brush and do some magic there. Painting. Whoa. I like to do sound effects. Kind of get you in the, in the mood to see it. Like it's crying. Don't cry, gate. Ooh, that was kind of cool. It's so menacing. There's something in that black that's going a bit green. It's off. I'm gonna bring in some more white. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that white has so much tooth to it, it just sticks. Getting crazy with these colors. And then with my fan brush, let's see if I can get these to play nice. It's kind of bursting out there. Clean off that dude. Get him dry. Maybe with my one inch. Let's see if we can just pull that. What do we got going on there? Man, it's so reflective. I can't even tell. But from here, again, this is a great start. Um, I'm gonna press pause on this one, and we're gonna stop. Um, like I said, we're gonna do down the road, we're gonna come back and do some touch-ups, some revisits. But until then, this is an Oblivion Gate. And I'm excited, 10 years of Oblivion, you guys. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, um, advice, things you wanna see, the direction you want to see the show going. Um, yeah, comment, email us, whatever. Let us know. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, and I hope you got something good out of this today, especially if you're drawing something or painting or doing colored pencils, whatever you're doing. As long as you're doing something, it's better than nothing. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm Joe Lawson. This is the Joe of Painting, and we'll see you next time. See ya. <laughs>